Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrel. Hello, everybody. Can you believe it? Could it be true? Yes, this is our very last week of Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrels. Okay, but there's no need to worry. We don't need to fret because the big battle isn't over yet. Oh, hey, that rhymed. It did. Yeah. Okay, so we have one more week where we'll be battling each other to learn how God took care of his people even when they got kicked out of the promised land. And guess what? I already have our first challenge for today. Okay, so I want to see between the two of us mm -hmm. who can make the longest paper clip chain. Okay. Mm -hmm. In 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. All right. So we ready? We got our supplies. Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh no. I messed up. I got a two for one here. Oh, come on. I think so. Can... Oh, oh, I can't get this one. Ten. Oh, no. 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 Oh, oh. No. Oh, man. I also, um, somewhere, oh, maybe not. Maybe I got it right. I thought I had two in one spot, but it all, it all worked out in the end. So, good job. That's a point for me. Just starting off right. Starting off right. This actually reminds me of our stories for today. Today's story is about a bunch of people who linked arms and worked together to do something incredible. Before we get started, though, let's explain how this battle is going to work just one more time. Okay? So, Alexa will be Team Space Ninjas, and I will be Team Pirate Squirrels. Okay? You get to choose which team you are going to be on today. Now, go ahead, decide. Are you going to join the Space Ninjas or the Pirate Squirrels? The object of the competition is to be the team with the most points at the end. Each of those is worth one point. And at the end, we're going to count them all up, and whoever has the most points will win Sir Willy Wonky's stinky. Okay, so after the city of Jerusalem was destroyed, all of the Israelite people were taken away to foreign lands. And one of those people was a man named Nehemiah. One day, Nehemiah was talking to his friends, and his friends told him that a bunch of Israelites had moved back to Jerusalem. But they were kind of having a hard time because the city walls were still broken down. Nowadays, most cities don't really have walls, but why do you think city walls were so important back then? You see, back then if they didn't have a city wall, your enemies or wild animals could just walk right in and attack people. And it was also kind of embarrassing if you didn't have a wall because it meant that your city had been defeated. So when Nehemiah heard the news, he felt incredibly sad for his people. So he sat down and wept and prayed to God for help. So when he finished praying, Nehemiah went to the king with a big request. He said, oh, great and mighty king, if it pleases you, may I return to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall. Oh, and one more thing. Um, could you give me protection during my travels there? Mm, forgot another thing. One more thing. Um, could you give me also the materials and like everything I need to rebuild the walls? And uh, while I'm thinking of it, one more thing. Um, could you also kind of help me like build a house so I could live in it? Um, you know what? One more. No, no, wait. That's it. That's it. That's everything. Nehemiah waited nervously for the king to answer. The king said no, there was nothing Nehemiah could do to help. But God was kind to Nehemiah, 
and persuaded the king to say yes. Yes. And when Nehemiah got to Jerusalem and he saw the wall, he knew he couldn't do this by himself. So he gathered all of the people of the city together and he said, come on, let's rebuild this wall. And that's exactly what they did. The people gave money to help rebuild the wall. The people also gave supplies like wood and stone to help rebuild the wall. And when they had enough money and supplies, the people rolled up their sleeves and started building. I work. I work. I work all day. I work all night. I work. I work. I work all day. I work all night. I work. Yeah, I work. work. I work, work all day. day. I, I work, work all night. night. I work. I work. I work, work all day. Work. I work all night. Jack! <gasps> Wait. No! <sighs> oh, no. So when their enemies heard that the wall was being rebuilt, they weren't happy and they came up with a plan to uh, attack. Yeah. Uh, but Nehemiah heard about it and he came up with his own plan. He had half of the people work all night and day, but the other half, they guarded all day and all night. So finally, after working and guarding and guarding and working, 52 days later, the entire wall was rebuilt. When the wall was finished, a priest named Ezra gathered all the people together. Listen to what the Bible says he did. Nehemiah 8, chapter 5 and 6 said, Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him. That's because he was standing above them. As he opened the book, the people stood up. Ezra praised the Lord. He is the great God. All the people lifted up their hands and said, Amen. Amen. Then they bowed down. They turned their faces towards the ground and they worshiped the Lord. And then the people celebrated, they prayed, and they confessed their sins together. For more than 150 years, the people of Israel were forced to live in a foreign land. But now, finally, the people's hearts had returned to God. And because of that, God returned them to the promised land. Right. Now that you've heard the story, I think it's time to see how well you were listening. Are you all ready for the big review battle? Are you ready, Space Ninjas? And are you ready, Pirate Squirrels? All right, here's how the battle works. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. The first one to buzz in with the correct answer wins a point. Question number one. Nehemiah's friends told him that the walls around which city were still destroyed? Pirate squirrels. Jerusalem. Jerusalem is correct. Yes. Question number two. Which of the following did Nehemiah not ask the king for? Let me read them. Permission to return to Jerusalem. Use of the royal chariot. Protection during his travel. Or materials to rebuild the wall. Pirate squirrels. The royal chariot. That is correct, and the squirrels take a commanding lead. Question number three. In what ways did the people help Nehemiah rebuild the wall? Was it they provided money and materials? They worked to rebuild the wall? They guarded against the enemies? Or all of the above? Space Ninjas. All of the above. All of the above is correct. Here comes a comeback. No, 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 no. No, I got this. Question number four. How many days did it take to rebuild the wall? Space 50, Ninjas. 52. 52. No, 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 no. No, no. And our final question worth two points. Oh, no. Uh-uh. What was the name of the priest who led the Israelites in worship? Space Ninja. Ezra. No! Ezra is correct. Yeah! I had it. I had Space it. Space Ninjas, you are today's winner. Can Go you... Space Ninjas. Okay, all right. Let's, let's <laughs> move on. Let's move on. That doesn't matter. Can you believe that? 
Nehemiah was able to get the city walls rebuilt in only 52 days. That was a big job. And the wall was 16 feet thick. Yeah, yeah, that's a thick wall. And it went all the way around the entire city of Jerusalem. So how in the world was Nehemiah able to get a wall that big rebuilt? He had help. Yeah. Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem rebuilt the wall together. Who can remember some of the things that the people did together? Remember the people brought their money and their materials together. They worked together. They guarded against their enemies together. And that's not all. When they were finished rebuilding the wall, the people listened to God's word together and they worshiped together. They prayed together and they confessed their sins together. The story of Nehemiah shows us that when we work alone, we can only get a little bit done. But when we work together, we can do big things for God. Let me show you what I mean. Do you remember those uh, paperclip chains from, from earlier? I mean, Mine's just pretty long, but you know, with only one person who worked on building it, it this, I can only get so far, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were all to work together instead of alone, can you imagine how long, this, this could be a game changer, right? Like if we just instantly, so much so better. Much, so much yeah. better. Yeah. When you have help from other people, you can get way more done. And that's what our Bible verse for today says. And let's take a look at it. In Ecclesiastes 4.9, it says, Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. If we work together and help each other, we can build something amazing. God wanted the people of Jerusalem to work together to build the wall. And He wants us to work together to build His kingdom. It's not a kingdom with castles and walls. It's not made of wood and stone. The kingdom of God, the kingdom that God wants us to build is made of people. You built it by telling others about Jesus and showing God's love to people. You build it by reading God's word with people and worshiping with people and praying with people. You build it by helping poor people and sick people. You build it by sharing your stuff with people and encouraging them. But best of all, you build it by working together with others. God knows that we can do way more together than we can do alone. And that's why He gave us the church. The church isn't just a building, it's all the people, all of them that love and follow Jesus. It's you and you and you, you, me, you, everyone. When we become followers of Jesus, Jesus says to us, come on, let's build this kingdom. And when we link arms and work together, like Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem did, we can do big things for God. Yeah. So let's end our time today by praying together. Jesus, we thank you that we do not have to do this all by ourselves. Lord, that we have help from you, but that we also have help from other people. God, I pray that you would show each and every one of us how we can build your kingdom. Whatever that looks like with the other people in our lives, would you just show us how we can be a part of building your kingdom with others? It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's hold out our hands together to receive this blessing. May you remember that two people are better than one. May you always be willing to help those around you. And for the prayer station, you're going to write a prayer to God and tell him how much you love him. For the journal station, you're going to ask, have you ever worked together with other people to do something helpful or kind? You're going to write a letter to God and tell him about a time that you did that. For the Bible station, you're going to read Nehemiah 4 and draw a picture of the story or write to God your favorite part of the story and tell him why you liked it. Then lastly is the art station. Ezra helped the people of Jerusalem worship God together, and we can do that too. So draw a picture of yourself singing and worshiping God with your friends.